Hello and thanks for tuning in to my YouTube channel, Pickleball Pick Apart. My name is Rory. I take pickleball games off of YouTube and I critique the play on the court. Watching my videos will help make you a better pickleball player. In this video, a game between beginner pickleball players or maybe these players are not beginners. Regardless, this is pickleball play at the 2.5 level, the beginning level. If they are not beginners and have been playing pickleball for a while, here is the biggest mistake they are making. They have not taken the time to learn how to properly play pickleball. There's much more to playing pickleball than just hitting the ball back and forth over the net. These players can do that, but as far as for proper pickleball strategy, it is almost non-existent in this game. Now, let me say this. People play pickleball for different reasons. Some play for exercise, to socialize, just to have fun and have no intention of increasing their play to the next level, which is perfectly fine. But some players want to be the best pickleball players they can possibly be, which means taking lessons, drilling more than actually playing games, having the desire to go from 2.5 to 3.0 to 3.5 to 4.0 to 4.5 and maybe even beyond. Another important factor in moving up is studying by reading or watching instructional videos on how to succeed. So if these players truly want to get better, my best advice is to not play for a week or so and spend time studying studying, studying, watch hundreds of videos on YouTube on proper pickleball play, tips, tricks, advice, watch how the real players do it and how pickleball is meant to be played. Now in this video, there are some good things that the players do, but make no mistake about it, this is beginner pickleball. So if you're just starting to play pickleball or you are an experienced player, this video will help make you a better player, so let's go. First, a big thanks to Dorsey Slayton for posting the video on YouTube. It takes a lot of guts to put yourself out there on YouTube for the whole world to see, but she did it. Here are the players. You have Dorsey in black in the far court, and you have Kelly in blue. The guys are Peter and Logan. I don't know who was who, so we have the guy in the blue shirt and the guy in the black shirt. Here's the first point. Okay, not sure really what happened there. Dorsey did a really good job of hitting the ball right down the middle of the court. The guy in the blue shirt tried to hit a forehand and he just mishit it. And nice, uh, again, not sure what that was uh, so far. Two attempts by the gentleman to hit a ball back and neither one of them could do it. So again, this is pickleball at the 2.5 level. And you see this quite often, balls being hit out of the court. And let me say this too, whenever a game starts, they're saying this is game two. I was going to say maybe they are not warmed up. Maybe they are mentally not ready. But if this is game two, they've already played a game. So something like that at the beginning of a game, two balls that are just terribly mishit should probably not happen. That was a great shot by Dorsey. Just give her credit for hitting that shot. And here's what she noticed. Let me show you the mistake that the guy in the gray shirt made. Here comes the serve. Now, when it's hit back, look what he does. He cheats over to the center of the court. He's positioned not very much out of position, but enough to where it leaves this court open. He is positioned right here. He should be more like about right here if he would have been positioned correctly on the court, he would have been able to get to this ball. But because, again, he is cheating over to the center line, Dorsey sees that and she hits it right past him. So three exchanges in this game and the women have shown 
they have better pickleball skill than the men do. Okay, so let's talk about that. And I see this mistake a lot with beginner players. The first thing you have to realize is the chance of scoring an ace or a point on a serve is pretty much non-existent. So you want to make sure you clear the net by a wide margin so you do not hit it into the net like Darcy just did. Just get your serve into the court. Again, there was nothing special about that serve. She did a good job of getting it in and the guy in the blue shirt missed another very easy forehand. Okay, let's go watch this once again, and there is one good thing that happened and some bad things that happened. So first, the good. The guy in the black shirt hits a very good, deep, lofted return, which gives him enough time to get established at the non-volley zone. So now, at this point, Darcy has a decision to make. Is she going to hit a third shot drop into the kitchen? Maybe a third shot drive. Let's see what she chooses to do. She chooses to hit the ball. I call this a floater right into the guy in the black shirt's put away zone. This is a totally ineffective beginner shot. What it will do will allow the guy in the black shirt to keep Dorsey and Kelly at the service line and not allow them to move forward. Here's another one, the exact same thing. All she could really do was pop it up because the guy in the black shirt hit it right to her feet. At this point, this uh, exchange should be over. And there it is. Here's a fact. If you cannot move forward and you get stuck at the service line, your chance of losing the point is 70%. About the only way you can win the point is if your opponents make an unforced error by hitting the ball maybe into the net or out of the court. Okay, so here's a, uh, another mistake that was made, which is a very common mistake with beginner players. Kelly did an excellent job of hitting that return right down the center of the court. The blue guy, the guy in the blue shirt thought the guy in the black shirt was going to hit it. The guy in the black shirt thought the guy in the blue shirt was going to hit it. It's like the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. So what should have happened? The guy in the blue shirt should have taken that shot because it was to his forehand. I would, I would think maybe they've never played before, but again, this is the second game, so they have a game under their belt, and they should have decided who was going to take that shot. But again, an excellent job by Kelly of hitting that shot right down the middle of the court. If I'm the ladies, I continue to do that. Okay, let's go back and watch it, and it's just like I explained previously. Watch what happens here. Here comes the third shot. He tried a third shot drive, it was not low enough, and Darcy is able to get it back. Now, this is an even worse shot. This is a fifth shot. What he should have done was try to reset this ball into the kitchen. Instead, he popped it straight up to Darcy's put-away zone. And now they're having to back up. And like I mentioned before, the chances of the men's team winning this point are 30% unless they can reset the ball into the kitchen and advance forward. Nope, and he cannot do it. That's not even close. Cannot do it again. Actually, that ball was out. Kelly decided to hit it anyway, but she's doing a good job of keeping the men back. And there you have it. You just cannot win at pickleball unless you advance. And again, if these guys were... Uh, experienced players, instead of popping the ball up, 
to Darcy and Kelly. They would have tried their best to reset the ball into the kitchen. They did not do this at any point in that exchange. Okay, again, the guy in the black shirt is doing an excellent job with his returns. He's getting them deep, he's getting them lofted, and he is getting to the non-volley zone, waiting for the third shot. And great job by Darcy in getting that ball to drop. All the guy in the black shirt could do was pop it up because Darcy did a great job of hitting it at his feet. And the ball trickles over the net. She got a little lucky there because her paddle was in the wrong position. Paddle uh, was perpendicular to the ground, which means the ball can pretty much only be hit in a downward motion into the net. And that was an excellent shot by the guy in the blue shirt. Put some top spin on it and uh, hit a really nice shot for the winner. You're not going to see very many winners in this game. As in a lot of pickleball games, most points are scored by one team making an error and not by the result of a winner like that shot was. Nice little drop there. Let me show you what happened here, why that was able to take place. Here comes the shot. It is a decent third shot, but neither player was able to advance before the ball got back to them. Nice job by Darcy of getting to the non-volley zone. Now what is the guy in the black shirt going to do? He tried to hit a third shot drop was just not able to do it, not able to advance. He is now stuck in no man's land, and he just pops it right up, which is just a total beginner mistake. You just cannot hit the ball that high. You will have absolutely no way to advance because you're going to have to stay back and defend. It's a drive this time. Again, it has no positive effect because neither player can move up and he hits it right into the net. So he failed on a third shot drop, he failed on a fifth shot reset, and he failed on a seventh shot drive. Okay, got really lucky there, but let me just show you a flaw right here. Watch the backhand. It's not really a backhand, it's a punch and his feet were not set when he hit the ball. He just really got lucky, and the ball bounced over the net, and uh, Darcy and Kelly were not able to get it. All right, another really poor third shot by the guys. Here it comes right here. That's just really bad. The problem was, unlike she had done previously, after hitting the return, Darcy did not move forward. It's very obvious what happened here. Let's go back and take a look. Here it is. She stopped. Look where she stops. She stopped moving forward. If she would not have stopped moving forward, she would have been closer to the non-volley zone and she could have done a better job of taking this ball out of the air. So I don't know if she was just upset from the previous shot rolling over the net, but whatever the reason, that was a very poor play on her part. And just missed the backhand, but she was ready for it, just missed it. Again, look at that third shot. Just not even close to being a good third shot. Kelly was at the non-volley zone waiting for it and is keeping the guy in the blue shirt. I had mentioned his backhand. She hits it to his backhand again. And this is not a backhand. This is not a backhand stroke. This is a backhand punch. 
and it doesn't even come anywhere close to getting over the net. So I would highly suggest that the guy in the blue shirt drill on learning how to hit a proper backhand because if that's how he's going to do it, if I'm the ladies, I'm hitting it to his backhand every time. And hits the third shot into the net. These players may not be aware of it, but the third shot is the most important shot in pickleball. They have yet to be able to hit really an effective one, whether it be a third shot drive or a third shot drop. A lot of the third shots they are hitting, they are hitting floaters, hitting it right into, you know, high into the air for the opposing team to just smash it and keep them back. Again, another major mistake by beginner players not knowing what a third shot drop is and are just maybe not knowing how to execute it never having taken the time to practice it let's check out the third shot on this shot here it is okay there you go again a third shot drive that was hit right up here to his paddle to where he can hit it and keep her back and all she can do is pop it up again and they lose the point because the third shot was very poorly hit. Not having the understanding of how the game is supposed to be played. He tried. Good job by him to try that third shot. He just missed it. But again, a good attempt to at least try to hit a third shot drop. Let's see if he does it here. Nope. Okay, so far that was the best point in the match, but let's go ahead and watch the end of it. Okay. He somehow got that backhand in. Dinking right here. That was a good get, and he just tries to kind of like put some spin on it. Pops it right up, and boom. There you have it again. I mean, I cannot emphasize enough the importance of a third shot. And if you cannot hit a third shot properly, here's what's going to happen. And he hit the shot out. It was hit to his backhand again, and he missed another simple backhand put away by hitting the ball out. So during that point, the women did everything wrong and they still won the exchange. What's going to happen here on this third shot? Is she going to be able to hit an effective one? She tried. Give her props for trying to hit it into the kitchen. She just did not make it. There's that backhand again. It's a punch backhand. It is not a true pickleball stroke. Do not hit your backhand like this guy is hitting his backhand. It will not serve you well. But a good job by the ladies to continue to hit it to his backhand because they see what his weakness is. Nice job by the guy in the black shirt. As you can see, his backhand is much better than the guy in the blue shirt's backhand. Yep, don't hurt yourself. Uh, not the guy in the blue shirt. That was the guy in the black shirt's fault. Totally his fault. Watch the return here, trying a third shot drive. He hits it. It has absolutely no advantage for him doing so because he's not able to move forward. Another fifth shot, he does the exact same thing again. Not able to move forward, neither one of them. She hits it kind of uh, shallow. He attempts to get it and he has no chance of getting it. 
So I'm just going to be honest and let me talk about this, uh, something that happens with beginner players. As you just saw, the guy in the black shirt uh, hit an ineffective third shot and a fifth shot. The guy in the blue shirt did his best to get it, but he just could not get to the ball. When I'm playing with someone who continues to hit shots like that, I get really discouraged because I'm waiting for him to at least attempt to hit the ball into the kitchen so I can move forward. But when I can't move forward because my partner continually just floats the ball into the air, keeping me back, it really is discouraging. Um, that's what I can say about it. And it's like, you know, what's the purpose if we're just going to have to stay back the entire game and defend because we will absolutely have no chance of winning. Oh, that was just a great shot by Kelly. She had great awareness as to where the guy in the black shirt was. Let me show you what happens here. First, let's look where the guy in the blue shirt is positioned. He's positioned very, very close to the center line. That's not where he should be. For some reason, he's cheating over here. He should be about right here between the outline and the center line, and he is not. He is way over here. So here comes the serve. Here's the return. And did you see him move here, move even closer, or try to move closer to the center line? When he did, Kelly hit it here because this court right here was open. Instead of being where he is right here, he should have run up and been in the center of the court, and he might have been able to get to this ball. He is not. And Kelly just did a fantastic job, and that is another beginner mistake, not being properly positioned on the court. Nice deep serve that the guy in the blue shirt cannot get back. I mentioned it earlier, the women have better pickleball skills than the men do. Nice job by Kelly. Hit it right at his feet. They're having a lot of fun. They're smiling. They're talking back and forth, kind of ribbing each other. Again, it's a fun game. It's not a serious game. They're doing this, I think, for fun, socialization, and exercise. Nope. That forehand uh, was hit into the net for an unforced error by the guy in the blue shirt. And that ball is hit about six or seven feet out. Another example of beginner play not having control of your paddle or where the ball is going to go. Another third shot drive that had no positive effect because the guy in the blue shirt was at the non-volley zone waiting for it and she hit it right to him. Nope. Let's see what happens here. There's a nice return. So what is Kelly going to do? It looks like she's going to hit a third shot drive. Look where it is. Look where the ball is hit. You can't give this guy a better opportunity to put the ball away than hitting it exactly where she hit it. And he does exactly that. It's kind of like doing the same thing over and over and over and over and expecting a different result. I think that's the definition of insanity. I'm not saying that Kelly is insane, but if she continues to do that, the guy in the blue shirt should do that every time. Again, just uh, 
I don't know what to say about that. That's not even close. That's the second time he's done that. Uh, I don't know how you correct that unless you just drill and drill and drill and drill, hitting shot after shot after shot. So that's uh, the roll of the tape. He celebrates by raising his hands in the air. And the truth is, he just got lucky. And that ball is hit out. So let me just talk about this as well. Obviously, this game is pretty close. It's in the late stages of the game. When you're returning a serve at this point in the game, all you want to really do is get the serve back because the chance of you hitting a winner on a return of serve is pretty much non-existent. Just an error on Kelly's part. She's really been playing well for the most part, but that was just an unforced error. Six, seven. Kelly! Just what a shot by Kelly. Uh, let's go back and look at this. That great shot right there was the result of a very poor third shot by the guy in the blue shirt. Hit it right in Kelly's putaway zone. She hit it at a great angle to where the guy in the black shirt could not get to it. So an excellent job by Kelly. So far, the guys have not hit one third shot drop into the kitchen. Typical of beginner 2.5 level play. There's another third shot into the net. Cannot hit the third shot. Oh my goodness, he hit it right into the net when the court was totally wide open. Sometimes your eyes just get really, really big and you've got the shot, then you don't. That was a great shot. That was a fantastic third shot. He had some top spin on it. I don't know why he hasn't done that all game long. I really had no idea he had that shot in his arsenal, but it was a very good shot. And I think right there, the guy in the black shirt actually does hit his first third shot drop of the game. There it is, and the game is almost over. All Kelly could do was pop it up, and the guy in the black shirt put it away. If he played like that on every shot, on every return, he could advance in his level of play. But not when he does something like that. I mean, again, I cannot stress enough when a game gets to the point that this game is in, it's almost over. I know it's very close. The guy in the black shirt probably could have served the game out, but instead... He hits his serve about six feet out of the court. There just really is no excuse for that. You have got to get your serve in. Great shot. That's two shots in a row that he has hit like that. Where has his game been for the beginning, uh, or at least to this point in the game? He's kind of stepping up his game here. Nope. I mean, how poor is that? Just two poor shots back to back. First, let's take a look at the third shot. A while ago, he hit a perfect third shot drop. Now, this is about as bad as it gets. And then look at this. I had talked about his backhand. Here's the mistake the guy in the blue shirt is making. He should have run around this ball and hit his forehand. Instead, he chooses to hit that backhand that is really not a backhand all it is is a punch watch him punch this ball punch right into the net he did not get far enough over to allow him to swing his backhand that's about the fifth or the sixth time he has done this again great job by the women of hitting it to his backhand but the honest truth is the guy in the blue shirt should have run around and hit that ball with his forehand
That was a great job by Darcy to hang in that point. She got a couple of good gets, and she hit it to the guy's backhand again. And what did he do? He hit it right out of the court. Now they're just jawing at each other. I think she's given them the lip, man. I mean, she just had a couple of really great defensive plays, won the point, and maybe they have a chance to win it here. Oh, she hit it into the net. That third shot is just killing these teams. I mean, if even one player could hit an effective third shot, the team that that player's on would win. And I don't really know what that was again. The serve was not the greatest serve. He just... I don't know. Let's go back and take a look. Okay. At this point in the match, when he gets this close, don't try to do anything fancy. Just get the return over the net. That was not even halfway past the court. Unforced error into the net, and the women win the game. They are celebrating. Congratulations to them. I know it was a close game, maybe 11 to 8, 11 to 9. Uh, the honest truth is the women were just better than the men were, at least in this game. Maybe they could play two or three more games, and the men would win every one. But again, this is what beginner pickleball at the 2.5 level looks like. So there you have it. I tried my best to make this a learning experience. I tried to point out what the players did wrong, what they should have done instead, and what they need to do to improve. I hope watching this video helps you to improve your game. If you enjoyed it, please take the time to like it, subscribe to my channel, and click the notification bell so you'll be notified when I post a new video. That's it from Pickleball Picklepart. Again, my name is Rory. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the courts.